A portion of this video is made in collaboration with my board prep. Stay tuned till the end to find out more about them. Lice. There are two main kinds of lice, sucking lice and chewing lice. They both fall under the order Theraptera. Sucking lice, depending on how you look at them, suck. Blood to be specific. They are grouped under the suborder Anoplura. Chewing lice, on the other hand, like to chew on skin flakes, hair, and other organic debris on the animal's skin. They were previously grouped under suborder Malophaga, but are now divided into the three suborders Ischnocera, Amblycera, and Rhicotherina. Sucking lice infest only mammals, whereas chewing lice infest both mammals and birds. Both sucking and chewing lice are extremely host specific. Extremely. Anatomically, their claws are adapted to clinging to the average width of the hair or feather shaft of their specific host species. I like to imagine that they fall off hosts that don't match their very specific claw anatomy. Their eggs, called nits, are even glued to the hair shafts close to the skin. And here's a funny fact. I'm going to directly quote Georgie's parasitology for veterinarians because it's too funny to paraphrase. <clears throat> The hatching process itself is of passing interest. The young louse swallows air and ejects it through its anus to form a cushion of compressed air that forces the animal against the operculum, or lid, of the eggshell until it pops open. Thus it may be said, with due application of etymology and low humor, that every louse is hoisted by its own petard. That's what Georgie's parasitology for veterinarians sound like to me. Anyway, do what you will with that knowledge. Why was this never brought up in vet school? So anyway, they live their entire lives on the host. They hatch into tiny versions of adult lice and molt three times. It takes about three to four weeks to become a full adult, with some variation among species. They move from one host to another through bridges of hair from physical contact. Only if the hair matches, though. You know, the width. So that was some general information about lice and their life cycle. The rest of the video will focus on the lice of dogs and cats specifically. Dogs can be infested with three species of lice. One sucking louse, the Nonathus setosus, and two chewing lice, Trichodectes canis and Heterodoxus spinager. The Nonathus setosus, being a sucking louse, have narrow pointy heads with retractable mouth parts. They have three pairs of tarsal claws, but the first pair is smaller than the others. They have no eyes and no paratergal plates. These features are important to differentiate them from other lice genera. Trichodectes canis is a chewing louse belonging in the suborder Ischnocera. So the head is bigger and they have ventral chewing mandibles. Common among lice under the suborder Ischnocera that chew on mammals are three jointed antennae. Trichodectes canis may serve as an intermediate host to Dipelagium caninum, similar to the cat and dog fleas. Video about that at the top right. They chew on pretty much the same things the flea larvae ingest, so you can tell where they pick up this tapeworm. The other chewing louse of dogs, Heterodoxus spinager, belongs in the suborder Amblycera. They have triangularly shaped heads, and they're not as fat as Trichodectes. These guys are less host specific than the other lice, though. They were thought to be originally a louse of marsupials, then dingoes, and then of domestic dogs and other canids. Cats can be infested with only one species of louse, Felicola sabrostratus. It's a chewing louse of the suborder Ischnostera. Its head is big and triangle-shaped, but not the same kind of triangle shape as Heterodoxus spinager. And being a mammal louse of the suborder Ischnostera, have three jointed antennae. Being infested with lice is, of course, very itchy. You can inspect your pet's coat for lice by parting the fur. They like to hide in matted fur. Chewing lice usually move around more than sucking lice. They're faster, too. The lice are visible to the naked eye, but using a magnification device may help. You may even find some nits. I'll stress this again. They are extremely host-specific. It's a misconception that humans can get lice from their pets. Humans have their own lice. And sometimes the family dog or cat is falsely incriminated as the source of a lice outbreak in a household. Especially for thyrus pubis infestations. If you know, you know. Anyway, that's a human thing. Treatment. 
Most of the flea control products I discussed in this previous video work against lice too. They are insects. To enumerate some, there's fipronil, imidacloprid, and salamectin. You can watch the previous video for how they work. And since the lice live on their host their whole lives and like to cling onto fur, shaving the coat can speed up their removal. And if you want to speed up your studies in veterinary medicine, testing yourself is the best way to remember the things you've learned. So let me tell you about my board prep. My board prep is the new platform for vet students studying for their board exams. They have around 1,200 questions divided into the various modules one can expect from the PRC exam. Each question has a rationalization that tells you the correct answer and more information about the topic. The questions are designed by subject matter experts and previous board exam top-notchers, myself included. Oh, and the explanations for my questions are in the videos I made here on my channel. <laughs> if you've been watching my videos, maybe you could get a perfect score. Up for the challenge? Then head on over to myboardprep.com. The link's in the description. Thank you for watching!